On the last episode, we looked at the foundation of Pro Wrestling Noah, its growth, and its beginning stages of its golden age. But unfortunately, today's episode, we're going to be seeing the end of that golden age, the stagnation, and one of the greatest tragedies to ever happen in any wrestling promotion. In 2005, Pro Wrestling Noah was still the premier promotion in Japan, but cracks were beginning to show. The problems of the main event that we saw back in the early years were still apparent. Of all of the stars of Noah in the main event scene, not a single one was an up-and-comer before the exodus. Kenta Kobashi couldn't hold the promotion by himself forever. Nisawa and Tawei passed their torches to Jun Akiyama's failed push. And other big names of theirs were either inconsistent like Takeshi Morishima, or left altogether like Yoshihiro Takayama who unfortunately suffered a stroke in 2004 after a G1 Climax Classic with Kensuke Sasaki that would keep him out of action until the late summer of 2006. Noah would have to pass the torch sooner or later, and at their March Budokan show, they chose the former. Kobashi's two-year GHC heavyweight title reign would come to an end to the former sumo underdog, Takeshi Rikkyo. The crowd erupted in cheers for the lovable big boy pulling off the greatest upset. And how long would they cheer for him? Well, April came, and in the main event, Rikkyo defeated Akatoshi Saido in a very average match. This defense would be overshadowed by a segment on this show where a recently made freelancer and All Japan pillar Toshiaki Kawada went to the ring and challenged Misawa to one last battle in their highly lauded war, and Misawa accepted. That match would main event Noah's second and so far last Tokyo Dome show later in the year. July 18th, 2005, Destiny. Noah's best show of all time. Each big match delivered on this card. Kenta and Kanemaru's battle over the junior heavyweight title, the pure wrestling fight of freelancer Minoru Suzuki with Naomichi Marufuji against Jun Akiyama and Makoto Hashi, Misawa and Kawada's grand finale, and the war between Kenta Kobashi and the debuting freelancer Kensuke Sasaki that people say Meltzer should have given five stars to. Looking back at this show though, the cracks were more visible than ever. The heavyweight champion Takeshi Rikkyo's defense? It was not in the main event, something that has not happened to Noah before this show. That is not a good sign for your champion of your top title. Another bad sign was their dojo turnout. Not the amount, not the wrestlers graduating, the amount coming out. By the end of 2005, there were very few graduates coming out of Noah's dojo compared to New Japan's and even All Japan's. Takashi Sugira, who was originally part of the All Japan dojo before the Exodus, Kotaro Suzuki, Go Shiozaki, Sutomo Hiryanagi, Atsushi Ayaki, Akihiko Ito, Ipeyota, Shuhei Taniguchi have been the only native talent to have debuted in Noah within Noah's first five years. In their defense though, wrestling as a whole in Japan was in a drought due to the popularity of MMA promotions such as Pride, and wasn't as financially lucrative as it was in the past. The November Budokan show featured one of the best tag team matches in Noah history, whereas Kensuke Sasaki and his 17 year old protege Kasuhiko Nakajima battled Kenta Kobashi and the rookie Go Shiozaki. Matches like this showed that Misawa had high hopes for Go Shiozaki in the future. And in the main event, Takeshi Rikkyo would battle Akira Tawe in a Haas Fest. Building up to this match, Rikkyo had beaten Misawa and was bent on beating the last pillar from all Japan and Noah. Rikkyo's defense unfortunately came short, and Tawe would be crowned champion to a wild crowd similar to Rikkyo's when he won it back in March. 2005 had been a year of experimentation, but 2006 
would go above that with what they would do with their top title. January's Budokan show would arrive, and Akira lost the GHC heavyweight title to Jun Akiyama in another attempt to make him the ace. But in the match before the main event, Kenta and Marufuji would battle for the junior heavyweight title. These two would become more important for Noah this year. Also going on, Misawa would start two experiments. The first, SEM, a junior developmental promotion within Noah, where fans would sit closer to the ring than usual, a concept that was adopted from European promotions at the time when Misawa traveled for cross-promotional work the year before. The other was the GPWA, the Global Professional Wrestling Alliance. A wrestling alliance similar to the NWA territories in the past where each member would aid the other with talent exchanges and training facilities. This alliance would hold three shows together and be dissolved years later. Akiyama's reign as champion was not bringing the results wanted either, unfortunately. One terrific defense against Minoru Suzuki that deserved a better reaction than it got, and an average one against the eternal mid-carder Masao Inoue, they were not bringing the Kobashi numbers seen before. Misawa needed to look for someone else. He can't go back to Rikyo. His reign was a letdown. Morishima is inconsistent with the crowds and was having weight issues something Misawa didn't like. Kobashi was starting to slow down and was focused more on aiding and building up the younger wrestlers for the future, but before that he had to take a hiatus due to his kidney cancer diagnosis in the summer. The stars of Noah at this point were not heavyweights, and Misawa decided to experiment again, this time with the best junior heavyweight, Naomichi Marufuji. September's Budokan show saw a massive shock to the crowd. A junior heavyweight was the world heavyweight champion for the first time since Yoshinari Ogawa in 2002. Funny enough, both of their reigns started by beating Nakayama. Now a junior heavyweight becoming a heavyweight champion isn't uncommon, considering Hayabusa was the ace of FMW for a time. But the common practice was to have the junior heavyweight bulk up and promote to the heavyweight division, like what Masawa did in his youth, or other big names in Puro like Atsushi Onida, Nobuhiku Takada, or even current aces in New Japan and All Japan, Kazushika Okada and Kento Miyahara, respectively. But Marufuji didn't really meet the fans' expectations, since he didn't do the normal weight class promotion like bulking up or adapting his moveset. He kept being a junior that would use his speed to break down his opponents. Similar to how, at the same time period, Rey Mysterio Jr. would wrestle larger opponents in the WWE. Marufuji's first defense in Japan would be another tradition breaker, as he would defend against his junior heavyweight rival, Kenta. Despite being a continuation of their war throughout the years, and was lauded as being one of the best matches of the 2000s, the crowd numbers were not what Misawa wanted. Less than half of the crowd actually paid for the event, while the rest were papered in to fill the seats. Noah relied on older businessmen to promote their shows, but they had nostalgia goggles. They wanted to see Misawa and Kobashi more than anyone else. A modern example would be like, say, those Saudi princes that get WWE shows featuring wrestlers specifically from, like... The Attitude Era, Goldberg, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels. Masawa wanted to set up his retirement next year, but he had to postpone that since he became the only draw that Noah fans wanted that was available. In December, Misawa beat Marufuji and would start 2007 as the heavyweight champion. Misawa's defenses in 2007 were not up to par with past champions. Challengers from the mid-card like Takuma Sano, Bison Smith, and Akira Tawe were not getting the reactions that Kobashi had, and his bouts with the upper mid-carders like Marufuji and Morishima weren't giving the fans the thought that they were the future of Noah by battling the reluctant Misawa. 
Not even bringing in Samoa Joe, one of the best wrestlers in TNA at the time, helped. But there was a bright side in this. The two-year relationship with American independent promotion Ring of Honor was flourishing. Wrestlers like Kenta, Marufuji, Shiozaki, and Morishima were getting positive reactions from the American wrestling communities, and Morishima would even become the ROH Heavyweight Champion, whose reign is one of the best in that title's history. Misawa would even defend the title in Ring of Honor, and his defense against Kenta would be, as quoted by Dave Meltzer, the last singles match in the four-star range for Misawa. December's Budokan show would see a short-term bump in attendance, because Kenta Kobashi was returning from his cancer treatment to a sold-out crowd. Misao and Akiyama would defeat the returning Kobashi and his partner, Yoshihiro Takayama. Despite his return, it did not bring the highs that we saw from before. Kobashi had become a shadow of his former self in terms of a moveset, and would be on less shows going forward to boot. But the biggest problem for Noah going into 2008 was that Japan was about to be hit by the global recession at the time. How would Noah perform going through this economic disaster? Noah's first Budokan show of the year in March saw former GHC heavyweight champion Marufuji and Takashi Sugira, who was a, one day a junior heavyweight, the other a major heavyweight, who's been over the years rising up the ranks, retain their GHC tag team titles against an ROH tag team, the Briscoes, with one of the greatest finishes I have ever seen in a wrestling show and Misawa passing the torch to Morishima after a 20 minute bout. Despite this changing of the guard, Misawa didn't want to risk taking time off due to how the crowds were concentrated on seeing his matches first and foremost. Misawa was accumulating injuries, including having osteophytes in his neck, where doing tasks like brushing his teeth caused pain. His right eye was losing its vision, and years of chain smoking and drinking were catching up hard. To aid himself during this hardest period, he relegated himself to tag team matches like Giant Baba did when he got older. Meanwhile, that ROH partnership was improving. Numerous ROH legends, such as Brian Danielson, BJ Whitmer, Claudio Castagnoli, Chris Hero, the Briscoes, Nigel McGuinness, Davey Richards, and Eddie Edwards, who actually trained in the Noah Dojo many years before, were seen as staples to the promotion similar to Stan Hansen or Steve Williams of All Japan. The partnership with WLW years before, where you had wrestlers like Trevor Murdoch, the Dakota Kid, which one do you think was going to be seen more favorably in the future? Before becoming GHC champion, Morishima was the ROH champion and was a monster of a man, having classics for eight months. In America, he was a behemoth, but in Japan, he was just some overweight guy. The crowds for years just could not get into Morishima in the way that the bookers wanted. One day, people loved him. The other day, people didn't care for him. Morishima was doomed. His matches weren't getting the reactions that Misawa wanted, and he had to find a new champion. During this period, Kensuke Sasaki, who was a freelancer that occasionally came over to have classics in 2005 and 2006, made Noah his main focus to operate in July of that year, after leaving his former main in All Japan since December 2004. Like his rival Kabashi, since that Tokyo Dome battle years before, 
He was aging and was getting broken down too. Despite that, he had name recognition due to his time as a former IWGP Heavyweight Champion and Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. Sasaki would bring his protégés that he trained to Noah with him, such as Katsuhiko Nakajima, Takashi Okita, Kento Miyahara. And these were great additions to the fledgling mid-card that Noah was seeing with their aging veterans such as Taman Honda, Masao Inoue, Jun Izumita. And who could forget the greatest mid-carder of them all, Mitsuo Momoda. Sasaki would beat Morishima in a Haas Fest and would become the first wrestler to hold all three major heavyweight titles in Japan. Sasaki would not fare better as a champion where he would face mid-carders such as Akitoshi Saido and Mohamed Yone in subpar matches. Yone and Saido are only threats in tag team title matches at this period and after. Things did not look good for Noah at the end of 2008. In September, Yomiuri TV, who was an affiliate to Nippon TV, cancelled their broadcast for Noah. This cancellation cut Noah from the Kansai region, which had been a wrestling hotbed since the times of Baba. Noah would also make budget cuts where they wouldn't bring the entire roster on tours, but a selection instead. At the end of the year, Nippon TV announced that they would cut Noah's broadcast programming at the end of quarter 1 2009, which would end 55 years of wrestling programming on the network since Ricky Dozan's first matches in the JWA. The first few months of 2009 were on cruise control, but their first Budokan show on March 1st was the first overall good show Noah saw in years where the norm for a while felt that they were one-match shows. Go Shiozaki and Takashi Sugira fought New Japan's Shinsuke Nakamura in Milano Collection AT in a very great bout. Kenta and Katsuhiku Nakajima stealing the show with their battle over the junior heavyweight title. And the main event though? Saw Junakiyama defeat Kensuke Sasaki in an average and forgettable match over the heavyweight title. The heavyweight division would continue to suffer. Misawa wanted an ace that could stick, and junior heavyweights weren't helping in drawing crowds despite getting the best reactions. Misawa looked at his blue chipper, Go Shiozaki, as the next ace, and to help set him up, he teamed up with him in the upcoming Global Tag League Tournament. The round robin tournaments that New Japan and All Japan featured were not present in NOAA for years until 2007, where a tag league for the junior heavyweights and a tag league in 2008 for the heavyweights, where the winners, Akatoshi Saido and Bison Smith, would win the tag team titles and would be holding the belts entering this tournament. The finals at the Budokan would be the first one broadcasted without NTV. Instead, they had much smaller satellite stations like G Plus and Samurai TV. Satellites though are not that popular in Japan, so the main exposure had to be a half hour time slot after midnight on TV Tokyo's affiliate, TV Osaka. And at this Budokan show, Misawa and Shiozaki would win the tournament finals against Kensuke Sasaki and Takeshi Morishima. This would actually be Misawa's 69th main event at this venue, but also his last. Prior to the event, Misawa getting promoters to advertise was pushed heavier than it used to be due to the MTV deal ending. The advertisers, though, wanted Noah's biggest stars no matter their condition. The process of pushing Go Shiozaki was going to plan though, having a hard fought battle with the heavyweight champion Jun Akiyama, followed by winning the tag league tournament with Misawa. The next step was to win the tag team titles. The bout would take place a little over halfway in their June tour in Hiroshima in front of 2300 people, but prior to this title bout, 
Masawa talked to a Tokyo sports reporter about his pains and his wants for retirement, but had to go on for Go Shiozaki because he knew that one break would make him stop. June 13th, 2009, the main event of the show went awry. During the bout featuring Bison Smith and Akitoshi Saito defending their tag team titles against Misawa and Shiozaki would be stopped after Misawa lost consciousness after receiving a belly-to-back suplex from Saito. The crowd began panicking after seeing staff surround Misawa and performing CPR. The roster would appear from the backstage and aided in any way to calm the crowds, while aiding the EMTs escort the gurney to the ambulance. Masala would be announced dead at the hospital. The official cause of death is unknown due to his family invoking a law that requests they keep it private, but speculations generally believe it, it was a cervical separation between his first and second vertebrae, an internal decapitation. Other theories say it was a heart attack that was caused from the vertebrae snapping, but the real thing is we may never know. The reaction to Masawa's death in the wrestling community were widespread and mournful. Numerous promotions around the world held 10 bell salutes. WWE and TNA posted memorial messages on their respective websites too. But the Noah wrestlers were hit the hardest. Go was in shock at what he saw, and Kodaro Suzuki, a close student to Masawa, was openly weeping. Marafuji, who was injured at the time, learned what happened on television and drove out from his home. When driving, going nearly pedal to the metal, received a call from Suzuki, informing him that Masawa passed away. Marafuji parked his car and looked out at the sky, trying to figure out what is even going on anymore. Junakiyama went to seek examination by doctors and learned that he had a hernia between his third and fourth vertebrae and would make a wise decision the following day. Meanwhile, in the non-wrestling world, the mainstream media sources of Japan outside of Nikon Sports and Tokyo Sports gave very little coverage due to the decline of wrestling's popularity in Japan. The one exception came from Nippon TV, thankfully, where broadcaster Kazuo Tokumitsu devoted 20 minutes of his morning program to Misawa. In fact, Tokumitsu was actually a major influencer in NTV and even worked as an announcer for All Japan and was against the cancellation of Noah's programming on the channel. June 14th was a day of grief for the promotion. Kotaro Suzuki cleaned Misawa's hotel room, even seeing that Misawa had a Super Robot Wars video game plugged in to the TV. Marufuji collapsed on all fours and wept outside of the room that held Misawa at the hospital, and the wrestlers learned that the promotion could not afford to cancel the tour's remaining dates, including that day's main event of Takeshi Rikio and Jun Akiyama for the GHC heavyweight title, until Akiyama announced his injuries and vacated the title for the first and so far only time in its history. Go Shiyazaki was made to be the replacement, and he would win that match, and during his press interview, broke down and sobbed loudly. Of all the wrestlers who struggled from the loss of Misawa, no one suffered more than Akatoshi Saido. When the match stopped after that move and seen the chaos happening around him, he would break down, knowing that he would carry this burden for the rest of his life. At the hospital, he would pray next to Masawa's bed until he had to leave. After Masawa's death, Saito's home would be vandalized, his mailbox would be full of death threats, and his children would be beaten up at school. He considered suicide, but made it through this dark time thanks to his co-workers and fans, who vocally called for an end to the harassment. There would be a private funeral attended by around a hundred people, including two people that stayed with All Japan during the Noah Exodus, Motoko Baba and Toshiaki Kawada. The public ceremony at the Differ Ariaki on July 4th saw 26,000 people attend, 
being the second most attended funeral for an athlete in Japan, with his former boss, Giant Baba, surpassing that number. The day after this ceremony at the stockholders meeting was the beginning of many shifts the promotion would see for years to come. Akira Tawe was named as the new president, with Kobashi and Marufuji as the vice presidents. This would see the former vice president, Mitsuo Momoda, to quit. Momoda was wrestling loyalty in a way. His father was Ricky Dozan, and he aided Giant Baba in the founding of All Japan, and aided Misawa in the founding of Noah. Momoda was against the promotion of Tawe, believing the biggest star should be the president. But he was in favor of seeing Kobashi be vice president, just not in the way of him being demoted to a counselor where he had no political power. Despite numerous attempts by both Kobashi and Akiyama, Momoda would leave the promotion on July 7th, where another aging opening act wrestler, Haruka Egan, would take his role. Things did not go smoothly though. Ryu Nakata, ring announcer and member of the board, and Kana Kobashi battled over what the promotion should do financially with the roster. Kobashi believed in the old philosophy that the company must be loyal to its wrestlers, while Nakata believed that cuts had to be made due to the financial state of Noah. In the end, Nakata won the battle. Marufuji was not prepared to deal with running the corporation, and even admitted that he had days where he couldn't even look at the computer due to severe headaches and relied heavily on legal affairs bureaus for many issues. He had to learn from scratch from this position. Go Shiyazaki would defend his title at the upcoming Budokan show in September against Akatoshi Saido. The match was decent and was seen as the official finish to their match months ago. Despite this though, the crowd wasn't invested fully. The loss of Misawa still affected the crowds. Shiozaki's reign would be hot-shotted at the December Budokan show, where another up-and-comer, Takashi Sagira, a wrestler who performed all across the promotion in both divisions, and was building up in the same way as Shiozaki, facing off against the veterans, a man who was seen as an organic build, and came off as believable to the crowds where Marafuji was seen as too small. Akiyama had bad luck ever since losing to Ogawa in 2002. Rikio's mediocrity, or Morishima's inconsistencies. Sekira would beat Shiyazaki for the belt, and it would end the nightmarish year of 2009. The first decade of Noah's existence saw rise and decline with many great talents. How will the 2010s be? Will it be the decade that stabilizes the promotion? Or will financial woes and other terrible things happen? <laughs>